Right. What's up guys? It's Matt. So this is going to be my part three video of my home defense series, which is uh, tips and tactics, all right, for home defense. So let's get it started with one question. If you have armed intruders that break into your house in the middle of the night, like the uh, home invaders, which I say are the most violent criminals out there that are coming to uh, cause you harm, what do you think is a better defense? This or this? Hmm. So there you have it. So uh, I found this actually the other day. I'm kind of excited about it. My old Little League Bat Wade Boggs edition. Oh, I'm aging myself there. So nice little, fun little bat. But here in New England, one thing that you'll find is a lot of people that defend their homes with stuff just like this. Daddy, yep, Daddy. exactly like this. All right. I see it all the time in New England in my family's houses and everything else. There's always a bat sitting around somewhere, and that's their primary go-to for home defense. So, uh... Eh, it'll work, but it's not gonna be great if the guys that are coming to your house are armed invaders with long guns and possibly body armor. Sorry, baseball bat kind of got the downer for that one. So anyway, I'm gonna get into this, guys, because, you know, like I said, this this series has been, it, I think it's a really important series, like I said, it's based off of someone trying to break into my home when I was home with my son. So, step one, guys, for home defense, always carry your gun for crying out loud. One, actually, you know what? Own a gun and then carry a gun. That's the other part. Always have a gun on you because you never know when you're going to need to pull it. All right? I always carry a gun all the time, guys. But this is basically going to be about... I have a table full of stuff here. I'm, I can't focus the camera down on it for you guys, but whatever. This is mainly going to be for the home invaders. I mean, this could work for anyone that's coming to your house. But the most violent are going to be the home invaders. And you are going to need the proper tools to be able to defend your house. All right, so guys, remember this. You are not a trained military infantryman that has a fire team or a squad or a platoon on their side to defend your home. So don't be all Rambo and try to defend yourself one-on-one -on -one by yourself by walking through your house clearing the house. Don't do that. What you need to do is you need to hold security and defend your family from the people that are coming in. Which means put your body in between your family and the bad guys that are coming to the house and you need to be armed and ready to defend yourself. And when you're doing this guys, someone had better be on the phone calling 911. It'll take several minutes for the police to get there, but they need to know. If you're a single person and you don't have a family like I do, three kids and a wife, then you should probably wait until the fight is over before you actually call because the most important part is staying alive and have call the police right when it's done. All right, because if you, they're coming in the house, it's going to be seconds, maybe minute, not even, maybe a minute before they reach you. So if you're too busy looking for your phone and you're not ready to defend yourself, you're not going to do a whole lot of good. So step one, get your weapons. Get, to, get ready to get into a fight, guys. Get ready to get into the fight and get ready to defend your home with everything you have because these people are brutal and they will not give you a second chance. All right, you need to defend yourself. Now, if you have to, you can call a phone while you're sitting there armed waiting for them to come in and tell them what's going on. But if it's happening so quickly, focus on defense. Call the police right afterwards. That's an important part. So, Okay, so basic tools, guys. This is basic tools. This is like my ideas. I'm actually bringing you military mindset tactics into this. When you're deployed in a combat zone, you're not fully in your flak jacket all the time with your rifle and the magazines and you know your holsters and everything like that. A lot of times when you're back at the rear at the FOB, you're just kind of walking around your camis or PT shorts and, t and, and uh, your skivvy shirt and you're just kind of minding your own business, but you have your weapons within reach. They aren't usually loaded because you're in the middle of a base and you're not allowed to carry it loaded when you're on a base. But they are available to you and the ammunition sources are available to you and with your training you can quickly load it. Now, what we would do for this is we would have our rifles on standby and a lot of times we would have 
a magazine pouch on the back of our right. Now, if this is a combat zone, obviously this isn't a combat zone, it's your home. Well, if someone's breaking in your house, it becomes a combat zone. But when I was in the Marine Corps, in a combat zone, I'd have my M203 ready for me on standby when I have the pop, just standing up on something. And I'd have a magazine on the back of it in a pouch. And if I needed to, in a last resort, I'd grab it, open the magazine, boom, and I'd be ready, all right? Obviously, there's a shotgun that doesn't work that way, but you, but you get the idea. So you need some sort of ammo source on your weapon, which, as you can see, I have this here, but this is my primary home defense shotgun, which means the tube is loaded, all right? I have shells in here, all right? I have four double out bucks loaded in the tube, and I have these extra five right over here. So I don't, I never leave a shotgun with a loaded chamber, guys, or a loaded breech, whatever you want to call it. I never do that because shotguns are not drop safe. Most shotguns are not drop safe, drop safe like your modern day pistols or rifles. So if it's loaded and it falls off something or your kid's knocks something over, it hits the ground, boom, all right? So and I know in a heartbeat it's simple to push the button and rack and you're ready to go. I know how to do that, I've trained myself, I know how to do that, all right? But anyway, digress there. For home defense, you are going to want, your primary defensive tool is going to be a long gun. I mean, you could do a pistol if you want, but a pistol is a backup caliber, guys. It's not going to stop someone in a heartbeat, unlike a 12 gauge or a rifle. If you guys want to choose a rifle over it, go for it. Just be aware the rifles have better penetration, which means it's going to go through the entire house, all right? I use double op buck. Uh, this is actually Hornady, critical defense, double op buck, all right? This stuff's pretty good. It's got, I think it's like eight or nine pellets. And it works great, guys. I mean, it has penetration, it, it'll go through, it'll take down a deer, it'll take down a bear, it'll definitely take down a person. And when you're in close range in a house, buckshot is great. Birdshot is not great. I know if people say it all the time, oh, just do birdshot. Birdshot, guys, is not powerful. When it gets a far enough distance away, it starts losing its power. It can actually not penetrate or actually bounce off stuff like, I don't know, bones. You know, if they're wearing armor, yeah, not going to happen. But double up buck, however will go through things. If they're wearing armor, it'll freaking knock them on their butts, all right? So, important, long gun for your primary for defense, a source of ammunition on it, and load it, all right? And ready to go, because if they break in the middle of the night, you're not gonna need to respond in a heartbeat, all right? And you're not always gonna have a ton of time to respond, all right? So, that's step one. Now, like I said, source of ammunition is important. I'll give you another step with that. You know, a lot of preppers will like this too. The shit, hit, shit hits a fan without roll. Got law people will like this too. This is a just in case. All right. So for most part, if I need to grab it, grab the shotgun with the source of ammunition on it, it'll be fine. But this is a little extra, and this is what's it called? It's a Rothko Ranger vest. I've had this for years, guys. And I've always set it up this way, guys. Every single time I've set it up this way, it's specifically designed for shotguns. Actually, if this is loaded with shells, too. So for the prepper, shit is, shit is a fan, guys, out there. This is another great way to go. And for home defense, if you want extra ammunition, boom, look at that. Get your rifle, throw on the vest, you're ready to go. Because you're going to be in your boxers, you're going to be in your birthday suit. Not the smartest idea. But you need to grab it quickly, and you need to be effective with it. So there you go, guys. All right. So... Now, for the people that don't have the long guns, you only have a pistol, and you even say, pistol's flying for home defense, that is my home defense go-to. I had another tip for you guys, too. So, again, this is, once again, this comes straight from the military mindset, from military tactics, and my experience in a combat zone. So, one, you're obviously, your defense pistol needs to be loaded, fully loaded, round in the chamber. They are drop safe, all right? If you're, their children, either out of the reach of the children, or... Like me, I have it locked up in a closet during the day, and at night I have it completely unlocked so I can just grab it in a heartbeat because I know that the home invaders come at night when people are asleep, okay, and you need to hurry quickly and get things done. But this will help you guys out. All right, this right here is your standard GI, that's right, standard GI duty belt or pistol belt, all right? I have my Smith & Wesson M&P set up on this. This is actually a uh, Army-issued... Uh, drop holster. It's actually a universal holster. It's like a $60, $50 thing, this holster alone. I won't get in that. I actually got it for free from a buddy of mine, and I love the thing. It works great. I mean, this is what I had when I was in the National Guard for a while, too. But this belt here, this belt, guys, you can get this at any surplus store for about 11 bucks, 11 12 bucks tops is what they go for. 
If you don't know a surplus store in your area or you're not sure where to find one, you know, I'll put a link below for uh, Midway USA. That's where I go to get this stuff too. And that's the same thing, 11, 12 bucks. Obviously, there's going to be shipping and handling, but here it is, guys. These are great. Now, why would, it, why would you need this and a drop holster and magazines and a cleaning pad? I just said that because it's just me. I like having cleaning and tools available for me if there's a malfunction after action. <laughs> But once again, you're sleeping you're in the middle of the night, you're in your birthday suit, you're in your boxers or whatever you sleep in your PJs. Are you just going to grab a pistol with, you know, one magazine in it? I mean, it might be fine. It might get lucky. It might be fine. But if you have multiple invaders, you're probably going to want more ammunition. So what I do is right here, no matter what I'm wearing, I can simply get up, grab it, wrap it around, boom. I don't even have to attach the drop holster leg. I can. I don't have to because it's going to take more seconds. And now I have a loaded pistol on me along with spare ammunition on me, guys. If you want, you can put a long knife or whatever crap you want to put into it. If you have a shotgun, you can put more shells on it. A rifle, you can put a magazine pouch on it. Basically, this is my pistol belt. Pistol belt. <laughs> All right, so I, it's set up for my pistol. If I need to in a hurry, I put it on, strap it on. If someone breaks into my house in the middle of the night, first step, Grab my shotgun. Second step, grab my pistol belt. Third step, I'm in my position waiting to go. I'm not going to go into the details of my actual plan because you guys don't need to know it, all right? But I'll discuss tips that you can do for it, all right? So, pistol belt, great way to go. You don't need a drop holster. You can get whatever holsters you want. Me personally, my preference. That's why I've always used in the military and I love them, all right? They're really good. So, that's it, guys. Now, those are tools. I mean, this shotgun, this H&R 12 gauge shotgun, it's like 250 bucks at Cabela's. I mean, you can afford that, guys. Yeah, it shoots good. Yeah, it shoots good ammunition. Like I said, I had the uh, Hornady Critical Defense in there. It's great ammunition. MP 450 500 dollar pistol. But like I said, pistols are back to calibers. Long guns are for defense. All right. All right, guys. So there you have it. So if you like this video, like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends about me, please. All right. And remember, guys, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. All right. Peace.